Meet Connecticut's youngest mayor next on the Stan Simpson Show. And welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues making a point to drop in every week. Aaron Stewart is in Britain's new mayor at 26. She's the youngest mayor in Connecticut and believed to be the youngest female mayor in state history. We'll talk in studio with the new mayor of hard-hitting New Britain and see what her vision is for the rough and tumble city. And later, Stewart will be joined by Trumbull First Selectman Timothy Herbst. He was elected at age 29 in 2009. We'll talk about the trials and triumphs of being a young chief, chief executive. But first, her honor. I guess you call that her honor. No more Aaron, right? Hard hit New Britain, Aaron Stewart. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. I love that you use hard hit in New Britain. That's I it. love that. That's <laughs> it. You know, we had your dad out here when he pulled the upset a few years back. Now you're here. Now, this yeah. is a fascinating story. You're 26 years old, yep. a Republican in a city where it's probably 10 to 1 Democrat. Pretty close. And you beat the incumbent by 1,000 votes. That's pretty impressive. So what happened there? 1,111. But who's exact. counting? <laughs> right. <laughs> so what happened there? Why was uh, Mayor Tim O'Brien so vulnerable? I think that people were, uh, the voters of New Britain were generally dissatisfied in the, the way that the city of New Britain had been run for two years. The policies that he had implemented, they felt that they didn't have a voice in City Hall. They saw increases in their taxes, which was a, a big one. New Britain has the second highest tax rate in the state of Connecticut. It's becoming increasingly difficult for young people to live there, uh, to raise families in New Britain. And uh, the, it, they saw the tax increases over his two years in office, and it, it really drove them to a breaking point. They wanted change. I came in and, and was offering a new generation of leadership, and that's what the people voted for. What made you decide to run now? Why now? Sure. Uh, watching. Watching what had happened to the city in, in two years, and watching that for sole political purposes, um, people be pinned against one another, and watching folks shut out of City Hall, shut down from speaking at City Council meetings. Obviously, I gained the interest watching my father be mayor for eight years, and I know that Politics 101 is listening to people and taking what they have to say into account when, when governing, and I just didn't truly really feel that that was happening, so I thought it was my time to step up to the plate uh, to really make a difference but also bringing a, a attention about local government uh, to younger people in our city. Now, did you aspire to be mayor? This was something you had in your radar, or were you compelled to run? No, I, I, let's just say uh, if you would ask me uh, two years ago if right. I would be doing this, I would not. What would your goal two years ago? Basically, you were a legislative age, right? Yeah. At a capital. Was, what was your goal two years ago? I wanted to go back to school, get my master's in public administration, and, and be, a, 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 honestly, a finance director. You really? Yeah. So, who was in your ear? Was Because the, the feeling is, I'm sure you know out there, that dad was probably in your ear, and that to what degree will Aaron be her own lady versus dad who's been there for, there for sure. three terms. Who, at the end of the day, did dad whisper in your ear, hey, let's, let's do this? Or who, decide, who ultimately pushed you to say, let's do this? Myself. When I told my father and uh, my mother, too, she was a big part of this as well, that I wanted to run for mayor, they kind of gave me the look and they went, what are you crazy? <laughs> but you just at got the, done with that, right? Yeah, that was it. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, when I told them that I was really dead set on doing this, I wanted to make a difference for the community. I wanted to make New Britain a better place to live, work, and raise a family. They said, "We're going to support you in whatever it is that you want to do, and we're going to help you all the way through." But my father was wonderful in letting me take this in my own direction and being there to support me and advise me as as necessary. But I surrounded myself with my people because it, it wasn't. I didn't want to bring in the same people that he had had because I wanted to do things differently. It's my way. And that's how it is today still where I can call on him and, and he's around to advise me when I have questions. And, uh, but he, he lets me be my own woman. Hmm. Now you're in an awkward spot to some degree in that if you do call on dad, folks will say, aha, he's running the show. Sure. But then you'd be crazy not to call on a guy who was there for what, three terms, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, four so, terms. Four terms. So <laughs> got... you'd be nuts not to call on a guy who's been there who knows the city, yeah. right? So, and, and I think that the general consensus is, is that my father chose to retire from politics. He didn't lose. He didn't go out on bad terms. Uh, he made that decision himself that eight years was enough. He term limited himself mm. um, because he thought that it was time for somebody else to, to have a chance at it. And uh, I, I think that 
he's still very well respected in, in the fact that he did a great job those eight years. And you're right, I, I would be crazy not to call on him when I needed to. So what is the Stewart vision for Hard Hidden? <laughs> what will you do? What do you, you have a, well, first thing you've done, you've been in office a few weeks, right? Or even a week. And you've uh, a already, week yesterday. And you've already put a hiring freeze on. So the city's already yep. saying, wow, she means business. You've already ordered a hiring freeze and a spending freeze, yes. right? Tell yep. us why. I did, uh, I chose to do a hiring and a spending freeze because you are looking at your anticipated budget projections. And as we're trying to figure out where we stand as a city, I need to make sure that we are able to see exactly where we're frivolously spending because keeping in mind, at the end of the day, we're spending other people's money. Mm. And the people in New Britain voted for change because they felt that their money wasn't being spent wisely. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that, yeah, you can put a hold on those paper clips for another two weeks. Or do you really need another ream of paper? Can't you email a PDF instead? Um, making those decisions until we can analyze where we are in terms of moving forward. I can't really make uh, too mu many too much further decisions until I receive our annual city audit, which I should be expecting on December 20th, mm -hmm. I'm told. And I'll be uh, looking for that with great anticipation to get a better feel for uh, where our trouble areas are. But it's been um, in the last few days of watching the POs come through, I think it's evident where we're spending a lot of our money. Which is where? Overtime. Oh, really? For yes. who? For who? In our public Police? works department. And yeah. Oh. Uh, you know. Interesting. Already, for it hadn't even snowed yet. <laughs> I'm a resident of New Britain. I want to make sure I know. we keep an eye on that. That's, I know you are. So you want to keep an eye on that. So overtime, Did you so that's for me? one. <laughs> You're gonna break. <laughs> We're gonna break down. You know what? I, I can't reveal that, but I was following your campaign very closely. Um, Thank you. But overtime is interesting. So you're saying right now you're seeing a red flag, right? Hey, yeah. why are we spending overtime right yeah. now on a budget? And you have winter time coming up. What other red flags do you see? Well, I think that it's no secret that over the last two years as well, people have been questioning questioning our city's finances and, and the direction that we've been going. We've bonded a lot of money in the last right. two years. For school um, books, for, right? For right. books, for many projects. And at some point, you've got to take a step back and really delve deep into those books and, and say, okay, well, where is the money coming from to pay this back? You can't just put everything on the city's credit card just because you have this limit that you create. You know, we're not going to run the city of New Britain's government like the state of Connecticut. But the schools have been failing for the last few years. So on the other hand, the schools have been falling, Correct. right? The issue has been not enough money, and the last mayor said, well, we're going to borrow it and do that. So if you don't borrow it, what do you do? Because meanwhile, the schools have been suffering. Being on the Board of Education for the last two years, I have learned a lot about our school system. And bring, step one was bringing in our new superintendent, Kel Cooper. He's done a phenomenal job in making a lot of changes that are necessary. But I don't always believe that money is the problem and a lot of times it's a management issue mm. and eliminating middle management and people that are are not really necessary that we're paying a lot of money to to work for us when they're not directly affecting our children so kids being the the ultimate priority at the end of the day and knowing that everything that we do should be able to should be affecting them and their ability to to graduate through our system go on to college and it's not always a money thing it's about getting people in place that care deeply about the students uh, future and making sure they have a vested interest in our community before we wrap for break what's the 90-day plan is there a 90-day or 100-day plan you have where you say okay after by February of 214 these things will be in place or you'll have a better snapshot here only being a weekend, I think it'd be premature <laughs> for me to give you that at the moment. However, uh, knowing that in the next two weeks we're We've been trying to meet with all the department heads, try to get a feel for where each department stands, right. where they think things that they think are working, things they think aren't working, and then we're going to turn my conference room into a war room and figure out where all these departments lie, who works underneath who, where can we cut, where can we save, where's potential. So it'd be a little premature for me to say that just yet. Okay, how about this? Shake up? Can we expect a shake up in some of the upper arches of upper management in City Hall? I think that I could be able to predict that very easily. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Some honest questions and answers here. We like <laughs> that. So now we're going to have a guy coming out in our next segment from Trumbull. Yep. Timothy Herbst. He was elected in 2009 at 29. So we're going to talk to him about what that's like now. We're going to have Timothy Herbst on, and he'll talk about the trials and triumphs of being a young chief executive officer. He'll join Aaron Stewart, the youngest mayor, youngest female mayor in the state history. You can catch our show 24-7, foxct.com slash Dan. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Do not go away.
Welcome back to the show. Trumbull first selectman Timothy Herbst was elected at age 29 in 2009. So what is his advice to Aaron Stewart, the 26-year-old newly elected mayor of hard-hit New Britain? Welcome, Tim Herbst. Uh, we have the young lions and lionesses now on our show. So 29 years old in 2009, first selectman. Now you're now in your third term there, third right? Third term. So what was the biggest learning curve for you as a, someone under 30 leading a town like Trumbull with 28,000? 37,000. Okay, all right. So talk to us about that. Well, you know, the first 100 days is uh, very interesting because you have to put a budget together, you have to hire uh, an administration, you have to put an administration together. Uh, so you really have to uh, hit the ground running, uh, work a lot of long hours, and not be afraid to make tough decisions and take on a lot of things at once. Mm. Uh, so um, my advice to Aaron is don't sweat it. Uh, and uh, just keep your head down, stay focused on your goals and, and your priorities, and she's going to do a great job. We're very proud of her. Did you guys know each other prior to all this? Were you friendly? or? Did we, you did. Yeah. we did. We did, and during the campaign, it was, it was fun to exchange an occasional text message just telling her, keep your head down. It was a good support system. Well, really <laughs> two young Republicans, right? On the, and then you had to use her dad was sort of uh, advised you when you were elected, right? He, her he dad was in office you, when I was elected to my first term, so... Um, uh, the, the first mayor, Stewart, was, a, was a, a good source of advice and counsel, and uh, I know that uh, a lot of other mayors in the state of Connecticut are very eager to help any way we can in, in giving uh, this mayor, Stewart, uh, all the help she needs. What kept you up at, at night? When you went to bed as mayor, or first elected, what kept you up at night? What kept me up at night was when I came into office, we were looking at a projected $3 million budget deficit. Mm. Uh, and then we had contractual obligations that were going to provide for about $3.5 million in salary increases. So when you're looking at all of these obligations you have, and when you're looking at the fact that you have to close uh, you know, a budget hole, uh, and you're looking at the fact that people are hurting and the economy's bad, what keeps you up at night is you don't want people to lose their jobs. You want to try to avoid layoffs if possible. You want to try to keep taxes as stable as possible so uh, your residents can plan their futures uh, with confidence and, and not worry about whether they're going to be able to afford to live in your community. So there's a lot of weight on your shoulders because you realize that the well-being of thousands of people uh, is in your hands and you have an obligation to hire people to work with you and make decisions uh, for the collective common good. So Mayor, really Stewart, what keeps that, Mayor Stewart, what keeps you up at night right now? <laughs> I haven't slept in months. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. <laughs> I think just not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, you know. Uh, the most difficult part right now is that you're trying to balance the uh, bigger goals, uh, long-term goals, with the short-term ones that pop up on a daily basis. So you've got, uh, you, you're, it's a constant juggling act. Mm. You know, what, what, what ball are we going to catch first? Um, so when the bigger plan is to look at the structure of the city of New Britain and, and how we're comprised, that's what I eventually want to get to. I've got a lot of little things that come up on a daily basis that, that need to be met and goals that need to be met. And I think that the unknown. <laughs> but it's, it is a very stressful position, but I'm confident that, you know, you surround yourself with good people and, and you're going to be successful. So I have high hopes. How much latitude did you have, Tim Herbst, in hiring your own people? Could you bring on your own folks? Could you do a shakeup? And how important is that? Um, in Trumbull, uh, there are a lot of people that the first selectman has the discretion to appoint. Finance director, public works director, economic development director, chief of staff. So uh, when I came into office, I took the position that, you know, similar to Aaron, uh, I defeated an incumbent. Right. Uh, people were not happy. They wanted change. So I took the position that the voters put me here to effectuate change. So I'm going to bring in a team of people that share my vision and that are going to help me implement that change in the platform that I ran on. You, you cleaned house. I did. You hear that? I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what question do you have for him, Mayor Stewart, to First Selectman Herbst? Do you have a question for him? I think one of the toughest challenges and the things I think about is how to balance providing services for your residents while um, at the same time, you know, keeping taxes stable. And I, I think that that's a, a really tough position for any leader to be in. Mm. And it's, it's a question of how do you best manage those things. And I know it's a very broad question to answer, but I think that's something that, that does keep me up at night to an extent. Well, I don't know how you do it in trouble. Well, I, I can tell you that, that government is about prioritizing. 
Uh, government is about identifying the core priorities and prioritizing. And uh, when you govern in a, in a difficult situation or in tough economic times, you're going to make decisions that are unpopular. Yeah. But if you approach every decision uh, guided by the principles that you ran on yeah. and guided by the principles that elected you, and if you keep that in mind and, and keep the big picture in mind, uh, you will make the right decisions and you will make decisions that your constituents uh, will support you on. What decision did you make that you wish you had back? What, if you had a mulligan, golf terms, you had to do it over again. I you use say, those a lot. You know, right? You're, 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 you're a golfer, right? You're <laughs> yeah. Golf family. So, what mulligan would you take out right now? Um, there were some administrative changes that I made. Uh, later that I wish I had made sooner. Um, I tried staffing, mean staffing, personnel. staffing. Uh, you know, you tried to give some people the benefit of the doubt, um, and sometimes you have to uh, be prepared to assess things, um, you know, and sooner rather than later. Mm. So there were some staffing changes that I had, that I eventually made that I wish I had made sooner. So better to err on the side of bringing in someone new than staying with someone who's on the bubble. If there's concerns with job performance, yes. And you know, the, the, the other piece of advice that I would have is you, you have to trust your instincts. Yeah. And that was a case where my instincts told me one thing and then I tried to you know, err on the side of caution. I said, let me give this person a chance. Right. And that's when sometimes you have to trust your gut, you have to go with your instincts, and you have to be prepared to make the decision. Mentors, how big an issue will mentors be for you and who do you have for, for your mentors <laughs> in about 30 seconds? I've been talking a lot. Ryan Bingham, the former mayor of Torrington, has been a big help to me. Mark Bowen, the mayor of Danbury. Mm -hmm. Tim, my father. Uh, and they've been really great in talking about real life experience because this isn't a job that you can learn from a textbook. Mm -hmm. You need to learn from people who have done it before, who have the experience and, and that you trust. How about decompressing? How do you, when you're getting away from the pressure of the job, what do you do to decompress, unwind? I work out a lot. I, 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 uh, I'm a uh, P90X. Uh, oh, you are? Addict. I love the well, insanity, because, uh... well, P90X, Tony Horton, who yes. created P90X, is a Trumbull native. Oh, is he really? And my father had him as a student his first year as a teacher in the Trumbull Public School System. So uh, I am a P90X enthusiast. Okay. It's a good way to decompress. I highly recommend it. Uh, but, uh, She's a golfer. She's a golfer. <laughs> I do like golf. But I, I probably won't be playing much of that. Well, she's probably so. a better golfer than I am. But exercise <laughs> is important. Very important. Right, Helps clear the mind. I'll take a break and come back on how to create jobs and keep young people in Connecticut. We're here with two of the rising stars in political and politics in Connecticut. We have uh, Tim Herps and Aaron Stewart. Don't go away, folks. We'll come back. Catch us 24-7. CT now or foxct.com slash Dan. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, too. Rising stars in politics. <laughs> the show folks <laughs> welcome back to the show catch my column every other friday in the Hartford current and current.com we're here with two rising stars in Connecticut politics we have timothy herbst who was the first selectman in trumbull he was the elected in 2009 at age 29 mm -hmm. uh, we have aaron stewart elected new britain 26 years old the youngest mayor in connecticut the youngest female mayor in the history of the state. Now, so some history, cool. right? Aaron, uh, not Bingham, not Aaron, uh, Mr. Bingham, Ryan Bingham from Torrington was 22 years old. Yes. So he was once the youngest person ever and the youngest mayor in the history. He stepped down a few months back. Then, Tim, you became the champ at 29, and then Erin has her win at 26, so she trumped you. I only had the title for one month, but I, I gladly relinquished the title. I win. To Mary Stewart. <laughs> gladly relinquished the title. So where did you start? Your first political start, when you first got the sense that, hey, this is kind of cool, where did it start off for you? Mayor Stewart. So, watching my dad for a while in, in politics, he was on the Board of Ed, City Council, became mayor when I was in high school. I couldn't stand it. I was always the mayor's daughter. I didn't want anything to do with it. Went away to college. He had this big race in New Britain. It was going to be a really close one. I got bit by the bug. I came home. I started working on the campaign. He ended up winning. And then I got my first job working for Congresswoman Nancy Johnson at the time on her campaign in 2006 against Chris Murphy. Mm -hmm. We all know how that ended up. Mm -hmm. um, but then from there, I, uh, I 
got my internship with Governor Rell, and I spent two years interning for Governor Rell. So it was right. very nice to have two positive female influences on me at that time, and the rest is history. Rell Johnson Stewart, as far as your kitchen cabinet, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tim Hurt, for you, where did you get your first bite of the apple, so to speak? I had uh, worked on local campaigns when I was in high school, and uh, when I was a sophomore at Trinity, uh, I was asked by the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission in Trumbull to run for his seat on the Planning and Zoning Commission because he was running for first selectman that year. And what did you think? I said, you've got to be kidding me. I'm only 19 years old. You've got to be crazy. <laughs> and uh, I, after a lot of convincing, I made the decision to do it and was elected that year. Uh, to At what age? 19. 19 to P&D. Wow. Planning I and Zoning Commission. I got to on that one, too. Dude. I was 16 when I got appointed to the Board of Youth and Family Services really? as a new friend. You guys are going to be... <laughs> no, I, can't, I can't compete it's with It's going to be this way for the rest of the next 20 years, I think, it sounds like right now, right? <laughs> Governor, you know, I can't Senator, compete. Congress. I can't, I can't <laughs> compete with this. Uh, but I was, on, I was on planning and zoning through college and then through law school. Uh, and then I made uh, a decision that I wasn't going to run for, for planning and zoning again. Uh, I, I assumed I was going to go on and practice law. And uh, Life changed. Then the party came to me and they said, we want you to run for first selectman. Uh, we want you to take on an incumbent. And uh, very similar to Aaron, you know, it was, you know, I was the underdog. And uh, on November 3rd, 2009, life changed. And uh, here you are. Four years later. We have about four minutes left. Issues, jobs, right? Every politician, first selectman, mayor, governor, mm -hmm. the issue of jobs is a real big problem. Absolutely. What do you guys think needs to happen to create jobs, meaningful jobs in Connecticut? Start with hard hit New Britain. Well, I'll talk from, from my New Britain perspective, and it's about opening the communication lines between people. Um, really, sometimes all it takes is, is a phone call to a, a prospective business owner to say, hey, I have a, a, you know, a parcel of land I want you to take a look at. Mm -hmm. Having that, and I said this during the campaign, having that smiling face at the front door of City Hall to tell people, hey, you're welcome here. Please come in and talk to me. I want to sit down with you and talk about how you can develop in New Britain. Starts with that, you know, working with my economic development director and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, but, you know, also appealing to a, a different demographic, too. Me personally, I want to see a lot of younger people in New Britain. We do have a large uh, young population, but your school system is exactly where that's going to come right. from. And a place called Central Connecticut State is pretty out there, too, right? You know it. My alma right. mater. Right. How about you, Tim? <laughs> jobs. Well, I think you have to make Connecticut business friendly, to Aaron's mm -hmm. point, but I think the way you make Connecticut business friendly is you have to make it people friendly. And the cost of living right now in the state of Connecticut is far too high. We have a very high cost of living in the state, and that's the reason why people between the ages of 18 to 24 are leaving the state of Connecticut in droves uh, because of the cost of living. We have a high tax rate in the state of Connecticut. We pay the highest utility rates of any state in the continental United States. So how do you reverse that? How do you reverse that trend? Well, I think you need to elect people to the legislature, and I think you need to elect a governor who understands that uh, at the local level, we're tightening our belts because we're at ground zero, trying to make sure we provide services to our residents while keeping our tax rate stable. And our state government needs to do the same thing. They need to realize that you can only spend what you can afford and we shouldn't be borrowing to meet operating expenses and we shouldn't be putting gimmicks in our state budget uh, to balance our state budget. We should be honest and candid with people that uh, we need to tighten our belts at the state level and we need to stop with the unfunded mandates and stop growing the size of state government. All right, we've got about a minute left. So you mentioned all of those, out outlined all those important elements, right? So where do you start now? Because you, you, where, where would you start first in about 30 seconds? Where would you start first as far as procedures, policies? A lot of folks say that it's about the process, that you come in there, you have a smiling face, but it takes too long of a process. It's too protracted to go from shaking your hand, being open for business, to getting something approved. How do you streamline the process for a prospective person who comes in and wants to build and expand, but the process is too protracted? Local level or state level? Either or. You have to eliminate the red tape and the bureaucracy. I can't begin to tell you how many developers and businesses that come to Trumbull and want to open a business share with me horror stories of having to deal with DEP or DOT or these burdens, burdensome state agencies. Turn off, right? Turn off. You have to make, create a business friendly environment that cuts the red tape, cuts the bureaucracy, uh, and, and allows people to grow and open their businesses without having to deal with overburdensome regulations that, quite frankly, destroy discourage business investment long term. 15 seconds, keeping young people in the state. Yep. Give me one quick bullet point here, 15 seconds. What's the one thing you'd want to do from a local level, state level, to keep young people in the state? To keep young people in the state, at least in New Britain, I got to change my downtown. I got to develop my downtown into looking like a, a Middletown or a West Hartford. Ten, five seconds. Incentivize. <laughs> 
keep costs low. All right. Tim Hurst, Aaron Stewart, <laughs> thanks to you guys. The young, rising politicians here in Connecticut, folks. Keep an eye out for them. Catch our show 24-7, foxct.com slash Stan. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. For the good folks here at Fox Connecticut, I'm Stan Simpson. The Morning News is next.